Our Torah begins with the letter Bet in Bereshit. And the Midrash says, why don't we begin the Torah with the letter Aleph? It's the first letter of the Aleph Bet. Why don't we start off the Torah with the first letter of the Aleph Bet? With the Aleph, why do you go with the second letter? And I saw an explanation that goes like this. The Bet is numerically two. And in order for us to understand the Torah, we need our Chachamim, our Rabbis, to come along and give it over to us. We can't do it alone. It has to be a Rebbe Talmud relationship. It has to be a rabbi student relationship where a rabbi is going to come and give us the Torah and explain to us exactly what's taking place. Just recently in the holidays, you know, the Sukkot, we had an uh, older man comes to sh- come to show with the etrog. How do they know they need an etrog? Maybe they should have brought an apple. Maybe they should have brought a, 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 a kiwi or avocado or passion fruit. Why did they decide to bring an etrog? The Pasuk says, Bret Hada, you should bring a fruit. But how do I know what this fruit was? How am I supposed to understand what the fruit was? It doesn't tell us. It should bring an exotic fruit, a beautiful fruit. But what is considered a beautiful fruit in God's eyes? So our Chachamim have to come along and explain to us the fruit that God is referring to is the etrog. Without our Chachamim, we would have never understood what Hashem wants from us. You know, look at it this way. Take another uh, mitzvah. For example, tefillin. The Torah says, Bein enecha. You should put the tefillin where? Between your eyes. Do you ever go to shul and see people put the boxes in between their eyes? They put it right by the hairline. How do we know that? We need the Talmud, we need the rabbis to come along and explain this to us. Without them we would fail learning the Pasukim. We're going to give our own distorted interpretations behind the Torah. There was a father who was very old. He was getting old and he was passing away. So he called over his son. He said, you know, my time is coming for me to leave this world. He tells his son, I was very successful in my life. I want to give you the three keys to success. You want to know how to be successful in life? Number one, always eat honey. Always eat honey. Number two, make sure to stay away from the sun. Number three, oh, when you go to sleep, sleep in silk. And then the father passed away. The, the, the son didn't understand. What is my father telling me? I should eat honey, run away from the sun, stay away from the sun, and I should sleep in silk? I don't understand. So he started taking his father's words literally. He said, listen, my father told me I should eat honey. That's what I'm going to do. So he packs up lunch for work. He takes a whole jar of honey, puts it in his bag. Now he's going outside. The sun is out. My father told me to stay away from the sun. What am I going to do? So he goes running under the shades. And he starts running from under the tree to under the, the, you know, from one place to another. And finally, he gets to his job. He looks like his tie is over here. He's sweating. He's been running from place to place trying to stay away from the sun. Everyone takes out a sandwich by lunch. He takes out a jar of honey. He starts eating the honey. And then he goes home that night, goes to sleep, puts on his silk clothes, takes a, you know, goes to sleep. The next morning he has to go get the paper outside, comes out in his silk clothes. Who wears silk pajamas? It looks funny. People are passing by, looking at him like he's a bit interesting. And then he starts feeling nauseous. He goes to work. He looks out of it. He's been eating honey all day long. And he got tired of running around from shade to shade. So he came out with an umbrella. It's 100 degrees outside. This guy's coming out with an umbrella as if it's pouring rain. And everyone thinks he's nuts. Eventually, he gets a knock on the door. Who is it? It's his father's best friend. He says, you know, I know your father for many years. He was a wise person. He was very respected. And then you come along and you're embarrassing your father's name. What are you doing? I see you running around. People say you're eating honey, sleeping in silk. He says, let me explain to you. My father told me to do this. I'm only following my father's instructions. He said, what are you talking about? He says, yeah, my father said, I should eat honey. I should stay away from the sun. And I should sleep in silk. He says, your father was a wise man. Whatever he said had much depth and meaning behind it. You should look into the words of your father a little bit better. When your father told you that you have to eat honey, what he meant was in order to be successful in life, you have to learn to enjoy what you have in life. Learn to enjoy the job that you have. Learn to enjoy, then you'll be successful. If you don't enjoy, you're not going to do it with a passion. How are you going to be successful in life? He says, okay, that makes sense. So why did my father say, stay away from the sun? He says, that's very simple. You want to be successful in life, you have to stay away from the sun. You have to wake up extra early. You can't wake up when the sun wakes up. You have to get up early in the morning. can't get up 10 o'clock, 11, 12 o'clock at night in the, mo- in the afternoon. You want to ex- succeed in life? Wake up early. Wake up before the, the sun rises. He says, wow, I never thought of that. Brilliant. He says, yes. What about the sleeping in silk? Well, silk is a, silk is a very expensive uh, material. He probably wants to tell you that you have to dress well, take care of yourself. You know, sleep in silk means you have to make sure you look presentable. People will look at you. They're going to watch you. And so you have to represent. You have to look presentable. He says, well, now I understand. You see, our Torah is like a prescription. 
When you go to a doctor, they give you a prescription. You don't know what the prescription says. You have no idea what the doctor is talking about. You take it to the pharmacist. The pharmacist looks at it. He understands what medicine you need, what a dosage you need, how many days you have to take it for. He understands all the ins and outs of what the doctor wants from you. Our chachamim are like the pharmacists. The Torah is like a prescription from God. You cannot understand it without our chachamim. Our chachamim have to come along and explain it to us. And just like this man thought he understood his father and he took his father's words literally, if we come along and we're going to start to take the Torah and try to lower it to our level, and try to understand it, we're going to give the wrong interpretation to the, to the Torah. And so we have to understand that in order for us to succeed at keeping the Torah properly, we need the help of our Chachamim. We need the help of our Rabbis. And we have to appreciate what we have, because our Chachamim have Siyat HaDashmai, a great deal of Siyat HaDashmai. And they are able to explain to us the Torah according to the way it's needed to be interpreted. So, with this, we can understand why the Torah must start off with the letter Bet. Because the bet is, represents two. And the two is between you and your rabbi. Und- take the Torah from your rabbi and now you'll be able to learn it. Because on your own, you won't be able to understand it. 